Good morning, and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Paul. We're so glad you've joined us either in person or via our live stream uh, this morning. A couple of announcements in our life together before we begin worship. This Tuesday, Laura Rutland, a Professor Emeritus of Gannon, will be starting our sort of small series on poetry and praise in turbulent times. So she's curated some poems and you're invited to come here Tuesday night to sort of engage in learning and discussion and good poetry that helps us think about how we live. So I'll, I'll hope to see you there. Uh, additionally, we have a bunch of other announcements about feeding the homeless and Celtic. All the announcements can be found printed in the back of your bulletin. For today's service, it's All Saints, so we're celebrating it big in white and with incense. Also, in place of the creed in the confession today, we'll do something called renewing our baptismal vows. And so uh, that's kind of the core of what, of what sort of the Episcopal faith is, I think, both the confession of who Jesus is and how we try to live in the world. And I will come around and sprinkle you with water as a reminder of our baptism, so don't be surprised. <laughs> the other thing is that um, ever since diocesan convention where we did some exercises around uh, gratitude, I've been thinking about that. And uh, data shows that we can be grateful internally, but it really only begins to change our mindsets when we write it down. And so uh, for fun this season, we've got kind of an art installation going in coffee hour. You'll see a thing that has twine, and you're invited to grab a leaf uh, and just something you're grateful for, the practice of writing it down and pin it up and we'll make a lovely art installation of all of the things for which we find ourselves in gratitude this season. So, I think it should be fun. Welcome to this space. I hope that you are able in these few moments before worship to draw a few deep breaths, to feel your feet planted on the ground and to bring your whole self into this space where the spirit is flowing in and around and through us and meets us here as we worship.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. A reading from the book of Revelation to John. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are seated before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. 
for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil falsely against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, All Saints Day, is the day we celebrate all of the sort of great saints of the church who lived incredible lives that set a witness for us. And maybe you have a saint in your life with whom you identify or who speaks to your heart and so, sort of serves as a guide for you. It's also the day we celebrate that we too are the saints of God. Because of Jesus Christ, we are justified before God. We're made right before God. We're sinners who are on the path to sainthood. People who still get it wrong, but who are being made holy over the whole entire course of our lives and even after our lives. Today is also the day we remember the saints in our own lives. People who were older or younger than us, who journeyed with us, or showed us something about God's love, who gave us a shoulder to cry on, or held our hand, or helped develop our character and who we are. And we sit in gratitude for the gift of those things and those people who've made us who we are. But this of the three things we remember is the most bittersweet for me, I think, because implied in it is a celebration of people who are no longer physically present in our lives. And so that great sort of emotional soup that I feel of like gratitude for the things given me and yet the deep ache. If I could just dial that 502 area code and my grandmother would say hello, it would just be enough. Or ring that bell on Valley Street and say, I know it's been a while. This is my kiddo Luke. You and he are going to love each other. It creates this kind of sense of gratitude and a little bit of grief, and that's probably what loss is, right? And the church calendar gifts us this day that holds all of those things together. The gratitude and the gift and the loss and death, that these things are all held together on this All Saints Day which accounts for sometimes the strangeness of a service with exuberant music and then the remembering of people who've died. It feels a little bit schizophrenic until you realize that they all go to together and they belong here in the church. And it may not surprise you, given my vocation, that 
I spend a lot of time talking to people about dying, about grief, about death. In odd places, airplanes, haircuts, second worst haircut I've ever received in my life, because we were very focused on other things. At parties, even. Because there's no real place to talk about those things. As people go less to funerals and memorial services don't really happen, you don't have a community to talk to about it anymore. The church kind of has a responsibility to, to talk about these things and to hold a space that is honest and true and not despairing, but also not trivializing. People often want to have me give them an answer and I don't, that's above my pay grade. I do not have an answer about what happens. What I have are sort of a set of truths that you also have in scripture. And one of them comes today in, the, in, in John's letter. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us. Sorry for the new international version, but I think they get it right in this instance. The love that God has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And what will be, we don't yet know, but we know this, we'll be like him. And right there, John gets it. What is true, the truth is that God's lavish love holds us. In life, through death, into death, we are the children of God. Death isn't like some bait and switch where God changes personality and comes to like reckon. The love of God holds us. We're the beloved children of God. And we don't know exactly what that means, and John confesses that. But this is what we do know. We will be like him. That having Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come means we are all being made children of God, like Christ. And so, whatever it is after death, we're not separate from God. The love of God holds us and the people we love. And even the people we don't know and didn't love, it holds all of us in the great communion of the Trinity. But that, of course, doesn't erase the sadness of it. You know, God calls God's self at one point Emmanuel, the translation of which is God with us. And throughout the Hebrew scriptures, God continually reminds God's people, I will be with you. When the waters rise up to your neck, I will be with you. We're, you're in exile, and there is nothing but dry ground. I will be with you. When you're in exile and your heart breaks, I will be with you. And then, of course, the Son of God becomes a person, and Jesus is quite literally with us, walking every single path. And Jesus weeps at the grave of his friend Lazarus, and you can make some giant theological thing about that, or maybe he simply is sad. Maybe he simply weeps because it really stinks that grief and loss are woven through life, and it's worth crying about. And Jesus spends his ministry making people well and trying to dry people's eyes because he's the son of God, and that's what God longs to do. He never offers triviality or easy answers. You know, I don't, I don't think God expects us to bury the grief or not to weep. So many times in scripture, the, the promise from God is, and I will dry every tear from your eye. Implicit in that, that there are tears in our eyes. That there are things and loss in this world that are worthy of weeping about, that break our hearts. But the truth of God is that we never walk it alone. Jesus Christ walked through this world, every piece of it, every part of it, through life and into death. We don't even do that alone. God is with us. And I think one of the things I love about the Anglican tradition is that we pray for the dead. It's usually the very last petition in the prayers of the people. Because maybe they're not that distant from us. Maybe it is the, our confession that we are all the living and the dead awaiting some kind of final resurrection, some kind of final moment when God makes a new heaven and a new earth. And until that time, we're all continuing in our praise and in our prayer with, with all of the saints who have come before us. 
that we're all still growing in grace and growing in the knowledge of God. And so we pray for the ones we love, but we see no longer. They're certainly part of our lives, and they're certainly part of the life of God. And so I don't know how this lit day lands for you. Unfortunately, you're subject to the whims of whatever sermon lands on me for the week, and this was the one that landed. The day landed odd. I don't know. An anniversary of someone I love is coming up that I don't see any longer. But I look out the room, and I don't think it's navel-gazing. You know, the great privilege, the great privilege of being a priest is walking the journey with you. And I look out, and I see a lot of people who've lost a lot of people they love. Sometimes that's happened when I've been with you, and sometimes it's just the scar that's left on your heart, living a new normal. And so maybe whatever this day is for you, may you feel it, may you know that God holds you in it. The lavish God, a love of God holds you and everyone that you love forever. And because I'm really pretty rubbish at conclusions, we can talk about that later, I've got a poem by Jan Richardson. For those who walked with us. For those who walked with us, this is a prayer. For those who have gone ahead, this is a blessing. For those who touched and tended us, who lingered with us while they lived, this is a thanksgiving. For those who journey still with us in the shadows of awareness, in the crevices of memory, in the landscape of our dreams, this is a benediction. Let us renew our baptismal covenant. Do you, reaffirm, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Amen. Do you believe in God the Father? Amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching, in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will. will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. will you strive for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being? I will. Grant, O oh Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. The Lord takes great pleasure in us. God cares for us and hears our prayers. So let us pray. We offer our prayers. Our hope is set on you, O Christ. Bless your church, O Lord. Increase our faith in you. Increase our love for one another. Increase in us a spirit of wisdom. 
we offer our prayers. Bless the human family, O Lord. Bless the poor. Bless the hungry. Bless those who now weep. We offer our prayers. Bless this good creation, O Lord. All things were made through you, and by your resurrection, they are given new life. We thank you that you are already making all things new. We offer our prayers. Bless this city, O Lord. May we be known as a generous people, doing to our neighbors as we would have them do to us. We offer our prayers. Bless those in need, O Lord. You adorn the poor with victory. You fill those who are hungry. Make happy those for whom we pray. We offer our prayers. Bless the saints who now rest from their labors, O Lord. Give them the kingdom of God as a possession forever and ever. We offer our prayers. As is fitting on this day, let us celebrate and remember the saints and loved ones in our own lives. No person is an island entire of itself. Each is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. With thanksgiving, we remember Richard Abbott Gilson. Margaret Gilson. Claudia Pontius. Sylvia Schmidt. Dr. Weston Fields. Rob Barker. Danny Crawlers. Evelyn Barbara Forrest. Isabel Hodgen. Ted and Nancy Trampenau. Sarah Trampenau Tinsman. Emily Winston. Stacy Oberacker. Evelyn Carpenter. Abigail Skinner. Craig Warvell. Scott Brimner. Adianto Nugroho. Michael Bean. David Christensen. John Christensen. Philip Schutte. Wynn and Spence Ramsey. Bill and Fran Schutte. Aunt Jean Brown. Barb French. Lois Bergman. Jan Sprague. Susan Carol Lissick. 
Clarence and Jeanette Shearer. Mary Lou and Alan Jones. Margaret Deeringer. Mary Teresa Jones. John Wise. Edward Charles Wise. Richard Cook. Ellis Cook. Shirley Sonnenberg. Robin Silvis. William Roberts. Hank Sipen. Michael Lowndes. Thomas Forsyth. Kenneth Ledbury. Donna and Russell Wheeler. Barbara Doverspike. Jerry Litzenberg. Richard and Mary Peoples. Matthew Ziegenheim. Robert and Sherry Roach. George and Beatrice Ziegenheim. Roy Bill Beach. Richard Fisher. Goldie M. Perry. Florence Chase. John Creech. Floyd Knappler. Charles Brock. Nancy Rhodes. Stan Bogus. Ann Nallen. Each person's death diminishes me, for I am involved in humankind. Therefore, ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for you. Death, be not proud. Though some have called you mighty and dreadful, yet you are not so. For those whom you think you can overthrow die not, poor death. Nor yet can you kill me. One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, you will die. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As we prepare to share this meal of bread and wine, let us remember that this table belongs to Jesus Christ, who invites everyone to receive what is offered, either bread and wine or a blessing. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of the triune God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain upon you now and evermore. Bless the Lord.